we're going to do our breath work and ice bath uh, oh. course on the Saturday. Just yeah. as just as you were thinking of warm weather, beach, positive, I just thought I'd yeah pop that in. I'm looking forward to that. So Tom, we're here again. Pleasure, another podcast, and today we're going to discuss some of the training that I did over the weekend. I trained with the, the GB GB guys over Saturday, Sunday, and you've just got back from a paddle school holiday in Tenerife, which looks yeah. looked an absolute blast. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about what is going on with the paddle school and, and what we're doing with our members this month and and how they're progressing. So how was how was the training? I mean, last time. I think we were we were on the podcast. You had a water bottle on your back. I feel like every time we talk on the podcast, I've got some kind of injury or, or not necessarily an injury, just aches and pains of of, of age. Although you're looking um, surprisingly fresh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. After your weekend's training. Yeah. No, I I, um, I was worried, but well, we spoke before, and I was thinking, I don't know how I'm going to manage going through, you know, four two-hour sessions over a weekend. Um, and actually, I surprised myself. I actually played quite well. Well, you were only going to do one day. I was only going to do one day, yeah, and then I then I decided to do two, and actually it was um, it was outdoor, and it's a massive difference. So you know, last time we talked about playing indoor, where where there's a low ceiling and there's pipes and stuff in the ceiling, and so you can't hit a, like a proper lob. And we're playing with those Adidas RX balls, which are, are like bullets. Well, here we went outside. We played with those Dunlop training balls, which are already slower and heavier, and and there was a little bit of wind, and so. I mean, I could slow the game down as much as I liked, and that's exactly what I did. I um, saw the pictures. It was a nice grey, cloudy, it was grey and cloudy, <laughs> and it and it, uh, and it was funny because it was it was windy, which for for most people you think, oh, I hate playing in the wind, you know. But but you and I, over years and years of tennis competing and paddle competing and things like that, we we're, we're used to playing in conditions and not letting it affect us like i mean how many matches have you played in in difficult conditions oh and the catchphrase is always well it's same for the other opponent yeah always it is. it's and, like, and it's like burnt in... into your brain that is yeah. it, as from a youngster in uh, competing in tennis well, well it is right Otherwise, you, you, you travel moan. you travel all the way to a to a, a futures an itf or, or or paddle and the conditions are difficult and you think oh god and i remember from from college in Texas, it was pretty windy there. Like every week we were playing an important match in the wind. And, and where I'm going with this is that, you know, this weekend the training was a little bit of wind and everyone on our team, mostly, not everyone, but, but mostly were, were used to indoor conditions. And so the levels of frustration that, that build up from that, A, they're used to just hitting fast with fast balls, but then also, you know, a little bit of wind, the sun is in your eyes, like using those all as tools in your game can be really beneficial. And, and that's pretty much what I did, which was ignore the conditions and use them to my advantage. And actually I played really well. <laughs> Don't tell me you're that, you're becoming that crafty older player. I am who that crafty older player. He's loving the horrible conditions, but it's just yeah. Yeah, yeah, because finding I'm... a way through. <laughs> because I know that there, everyone was neutralized, so no one could hit a big smash. So, so I was like, oh, perfect. <laughs> so, so my little fakes and my little bandecas were, were fine. And, and it was more about being persistent and dogged and determined and competitive, which is what is my game. So I, I was I was enjoying loving it. it. Yeah, yeah, it was good. And you know, we mixed round partners, and we you know a big thing of paddle, which I don't think is often spoken about, is being an adaptable partner, being a, a good partner. So you know, if you and I play. I know that I need to be the type of partner that helps you bring out the best in your game. But then when I play with a different partner, it's almost like not changing the way I approach it, but, but adapting so that that partner can get the most out of it. And I'm not talking about just the game. I'm talking about like the mental side as well. Like you're probably, you're, you're probably similar to me in that you're competitive, but uh, calmly competitive. You know, you're not, you're not too up and down. You, you know, you're very, I would say, very like particular and perfectionist on the court, but not, you know, I wouldn't say that you, you blow hot and cold in a game. Um, and, and so it's just, it's kind of adapting to, to that partner. And I think that's a big skill to, to, to have, particularly in, you know, there we are in, you know, a GB team setting. You're gonna play with different people in your team. You've got to be adaptable. I was just, just going to say that actually when you go to a European competition you're going to play with different partners some partners will play some days some won't so you really have to adapt to 
mm. the person you're playing with, don't you? Yeah, and so. we're, we're not in the fortunate position where everyone is a pair that they've been playing all year with and they're, you know, it's going great. I mean, here you're, you're testing out pairings and you're going to work out that one pair doesn't work so well and then you're going to have to m move pairs around. So it's important to be a good partner. Well, I feel like I missed out on that. I was supposed to go, but... You would have enjoyed those conditions as well. Yeah. They, they would have been a bit of you that, that, you know, as soon as you see your opponent just drop your head, oh, the wind, oh, I can't see the sun, or all of this, you think, oh, yeah, I've got this guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, at least one of us his could represent the paddle school at, at the GB next yeah, time. Yeah, well, it was, it was one of those that... Unfortunately, it was organised a little bit last minute, wasn't it? And, our, and yeah. we had our, you know, our, our holiday to Tenerife, which you went on booked, you know, well in advance, which we need to for those those holidays. But um, yeah, know. it was it was unfortunate I couldn't come. But to be fair, the paddle holiday in Tenerife was so much fun, and I was in very different conditions. I was in, <laughs> You're in nice weather, tropical yeah. paradise. Yeah. yeah over How in was Tenerife. that? How was the group? Really good, really, really good. There was, um, it was quite a small group this time. So myself and Nick Williams uh, took the group and it was great. They're, they were all quite a similar level. So it was an intermediate level holiday and we were at the Activate Sports Club mm. in Tenerife, which was really, really nice. It was one of these paddle clubs where it was not just a paddle club. You had a nice bar area, you had a gym, but it was all um, very like modern, modernly decorated very good for instagram photos you know that that sort of that it's sort of vibe key. yeah <laughs> yeah mm. but it, no it was it was it was great and we had a good group we did four days of training and like we always find with these holidays day one we have a number of players join us for the holiday and by day four it's almost like there's there's a different mm. players because they are just they've, they've transformed their game they've made massive improvements in that time and and it's a lot of fun. Mm. And, 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 yeah. and I, I mean, you mentioned Nick Williams there. I love working with Nick. Nick is, for those that don't know, is he's one of our lead coaches. He, he often leads a lot of our coach education, very experienced. Um, and he's just super org organised, isn't he? And he, he, he's very, like, methodical. I, you know, I, you often think of him as a, you know, a, a teacher. He, I mean, he is very teacher in the way that he, he delivers on court. And I, I enjoy doing those th those holidays with him. You know, he's, he is he is like that, very structured. Yeah, very knowledgeable, great to work with. And part of these holidays is obviously you learn a lot and it's great to train and it's great to meet new people, but it's also a lot of fun. And all of the players stayed at five-star accommodation and I'd never been to Tenerife. So it was, uh, yeah, very, uh, a nice surprise. Is it what you were expecting? Yeah, it was actually, it was, uh, a, you know tropical island kind of feel there was mountainous scenery and the weather mm. was great and actually the paddle conditions there were perfect because it was sunny but it wasn't there wasn't too much wind and yeah lots of players transformed their game and what hopefully main, we'll go what back. What was the main takeaway from games you think what do you think made the the biggest impact you know last time we talked I think it was our Ibiza holiday we talked about that ball down the middle like what what have you come away with this group thinking that was a major change that they've done to in, improve i think general understanding of how to win a paddle point i know that's quite general but on day one a lot of the players came and we, we see this a lot where players are from the back of the court trying to play fast passing shots they're coming forward they receive deep lobs and they're playing fast overheads not giving themselves time to come back to the net and a big part of what we did on the holiday was we did match analysis so like we've done on other holidays we videoed their games went through the games with them and we took them through all of the different shots in paddle so the 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 overheads the volleys the back glass and for me it was by day four when we did the social tournament at the end we were starting to see proper paddle points mm. and, and players understanding how to structure a point because on day one we saw very fast play and and there was a lot of ex-tennis players on the court and they were trying to play you know passing Chaotic, shots and win it? from the back yeah. yeah and they no one really understood what they were trying to do but by day four it was completely different and we've talked about this before but it is nice to sit back as a coach and kind of be proud of of what these players have achieved in in such a, a short amount of time mm. so it's rewarding that as well for the players because you know, you really see an understanding by that, that day four and, and not only like, you know, still they're not implementing all of it in their game, but at least now they, they know what they did and they know what they should have done and you see them making those changes. So it is, it is really rewarding. And I think, 
I had an interesting conversation yesterday. I was I was on court with a, a group um, around here and we were talking about chiquitas and lobs and, and playing those points and it was a bit of a revelation to them that the majority of their shots from the back of the court, back of the court, sorry, um, are either chiquitas or lobs, yeah. with the occasional fast, faster ball if mm -hmm. you want to hit to body, as opposed to what they thought was that they're going to hit most of them fast and then one one chiquita yeah. or one lob. Yeah. You know, and it's it's changing that mentality. You know, if you've got ten shots, and I'm just pulling these yeah. numbers out, but if you've got ten shots in your rally, you're playing one fast. You're playing five like chiquita or softer balls with angle and maybe three or four lobs you know that's almost the ratio that i was trying to explain to them that it should be that way around rather than eight fastballs or nine fastballs and one soft soft shot well that's almost the the tennis mindset isn't it mm. if you think of how you'd play in tennis that's how you'd play in tennis isn't it you would play mm. most of the time try and play a passing shot yeah and then you might mix it up with a lob or you might dip to feet to mix you, it up you, i mean especially from the back of the court i was trying to think of other than a drop shot i can't really think of a time when you would hit a soft ball like mm. there, there would be no advantage to doing that yeah you know like i mean okay you see you know under 12 kids they do like the moon balling and it goes loop it i mean you know but as adults you, you i just couldn't think of an occasion even if they ran into net you're never going to hit a soft ball to the feet of the the net yeah. player in tennis and so um it is well it's just a, it's a different sport as we, we we keep saying and a common theme am amongst the players on our, on our holiday and i know it's in previous holidays we've done as well is how to beat tennis players mm. and the chiquita and the lob is is a strategy or a technique of how you will beat tennis players yeah. because if you try and play fast passing shots all the time tennis players generally have good volleys and they like the ball coming to them fast and mm. so that was a big thing we talked about on our holiday was how how are you going to beat those tennis players is you have to play paddle shots you have mm. to use a chiquita you have to use a lob take the speed off and so yeah it was uh we, we we talked a lot about how to beat tennis players and i think those players are now going to go back mm. to their clubs and hopefully have ha have players, a better chance yeah. to beat all those tennis players i think i think the hardest thing with the chiquita is players don't use it so th so they're not used to using it and then they try and slow it down and they hit a float like a ball mm -hmm. that floats you know and and so it goes four feet above the net and it floats up instead of dipping down mm -hmm. and so then they think oh, i'm never using that again yeah you know and and that's the difficulty and and you know at our level when we play if there's a difference of three or four inches it's a struggle but but you know to have it float up like that is when you know there's real there's real pressure and and for me i'm always trying to explain to them it's just getting your range yeah like just once you practice it you will get your range and therefore get better at it but you just need to practice it allow yourself to make the odd floater yeah no i agree and uh yeah it was it was a very good trip overall and yeah i hope at some point we will we will go back to Tenerife at, mm. at the same place because it was a great location and yeah keep an eye on anyone who's interested in joining our holidays mm. um you know keep an eye on our events page because we'll be releasing new holidays there and if you have a group and you want to go away somewhere and you actually already have the people that want to do it mm. you can also email us at info at the .com and we can help put something together for you and we do we do a range of venues don't we? so we've done i mean recently we've done tenerife we've done portugal algarve we've done ibiza we've done la manga and uh, really when we look for these we look for you know a really good club don't we like with nice courts we look for a local local hotel that's that's nearby and then you know the facilities around that it's obviously got to be near the airport it's convenience and so um we only select those type of venues so that it, it it does work as a paddle holiday and what i would say is that um when we speak to people about paddle holidays they go on a lot of trips with their friends and then play play matches which are i would say you know social holidays so you go and and you just play mini mini matches or you play with a local coach in spain or, or whatever and they do some basket feeding but i'd say our holidays are really geared towards people who want to improve like if you're not that fussed about improving then it's probably not the right holiday for yeah. you like if you if you do want to just go on holiday and have some drinks and just play a, a little bit of paddle then then there are probably other places but if you want to actually genuinely transform your game over three or four days then then this is definitely your, the right choice i think yeah completely agree
Mm. Another thing that we are doing at the moment is our member challenge. So our member challenge is on footwork and um, that's kind of key I think. Again in the sessions I've done this week um, looking at the bandeka. Bandeka is always something right you say right what do you want to work on and everyone goes bandeka, vibra and, and so much of that is movement in a position to hit, hit and movement back to reposition to where you are on the court and it's driven by footwork. Almost all the time we talk to, to players about improving, get faster, prepare earlier, split step, all of this. I mean, this is all covered obviously in our member challenge um, this month, but it's such a key part of the game, isn't it? Yeah, footwork is, is everything really. And paddle, there is a very unique form of footwork. I think a lot of people assume that if you've come from tennis, that the footwork is, is similar because, well, it's on a smaller core, but it's, you know, the same, but it's, it's actually, it's very different in paddle, isn't it, mm. the footwork compared to, to tennis? Yeah, it is completely different. Uh, Multi-directional, lots of adjustment steps. I think like tennis, we, we always encourage people to do the extra steps, do the extra footwork, because it's a bit like the pros. They say, well, how do they move so fast and they move in one step? Or it's a bit like you watching Federer play tennis. He looks so graceful. He takes one step and he's in the perfect position. But, you know, these World Paddle Tour or Premier players are so good and they, they've, they've had so much repetition that they may only need one step. But when you're learning the game, you might need two or three. And, and, and it's important that you do that to adjust, to understand, particularly in paddle, when you've got the rebounds off the glass and getting in the right place, you need those extra steps. So keep light on your feet. And I think the other big difference to, to tennis is when the ball is coming towards you in tennis, you, you set your base, like yeah. you load your base, you set there in order to transfer, for, transfer your body weight into the shot. And I think a big thing is that when the ball comes in paddle and you use the glass, tennis players, and I suppose squash in a way do this as well, is they set their base and then wait for the ball off the glass and then they're slightly out of position. And actually part of the squash mentalities they use their wrist and, and they, they fire the ball back but um, here it's really important to keep those extra little steps going closer to to contact yeah we see that a lot don't we with, with the tennis players and it's, it's a really tough habit to get out of because you're unlearning something mm. that really the way that you use your feet and paddle is is actually a, a bad thing to do in tennis isn't it mm. you if you don't set a base in tennis then you, you cannot generate any power mm. and you're not you don't have that balance and so for a lot of tennis players, it's actually unlearning, unlearning some of those habits. But that's what our member challenge is all about, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's a series of tutorials that we have on our, on our private membership community. And it's going to take you through in 30 days how you can transform your footwork. And, and we've got some footwork exercises in there as well, yeah. part of the challenges. So we, we give the tutorials plus the challenge and then they, you know, they, hopefully players go away, practice it, and then we hopefully will see the players get faster over this month. I actually met one of our members in person in Tenerife. Oh, nice. And he was saying, the one, how, how do I improve my footwork? And I said, well, oh, God, you're in, you've asked in the right month. June is your month <laughs> because we're doing the footwork challenge. So, yeah, uh, yeah it was, um, but I think it's a topic that comes up a lot doesn't mm. it footwork and how how to improve it so if you are interested in well we do a lot of analysis it, and it's almost always you're not split stepping you're not timing the split step well enough or you're not preparing i mean it, those those three things are are key for most recreational i'd say big beginner to low intermediate or intermediate players yeah and, and so it, yeah it is key so now that you're back in training <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if that's a, a state, you know, a regular state, but yeah. When is when is the next time you're training, or I when? You can ask when's the next time we're playing a tournament together. Well, that, I was actually going to go on to that, but oh, you okay. you beat me to it. So, <laughs> I'd like to play one of the um, US tournaments. I've been seeing there's like you know the Red Paddle tours and things like that, and there's one in Florida in August that would be nice to play. Okay. You know, pending pending visas and things like that. I'd like to t play that, but sorry. Anything next... more local or? Yeah. Is it... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but there aren't though. No. There aren't really. No, like, where, no. What are we going to play in the UK? I mean, there's probably... Just thinking though, like we need to maximise you out in these conditions, don't we? So we do. British summer. British summer. Gale get force on, winds and, and cloud. Some, yeah, some, some difficult conditions. Yeah. But, but the thing is, is most of the times in the UK are like west of Scotland or Harrogate. It's actually quicker. It'll take about the same <laughs> amount of time to go to 
well, maybe not the US, that's a bit far, but most, most places in Europe. Um, yeah. But sorry, I cut you off. What was your, your, your question was now that I'm training? Well, I was going to say, when are we next getting on the training court now that, because I, you know, I, I love. This week, let's do it this let's week. Let's do it this week. Yeah, okay. this week, we'll get on the training court. You and me, bit of singles, cross court, outdoors. And know. what is the one thing, I mean, you don't train as much as I know you would like to train. Oh, I, I honestly, I, I didn't mention this at the weekend. I, I, I love the weekend. Yeah. Like I, I so rarely get a time to to play with good level players and play some matches and I loved it. I yeah. absolutely absolutely loved it. And and I don't get as much time to train as I would like. But I, when I, we go and train now, so this week we'll we'll go and train. What's the what's the one thing that you would train? Because on the weekend it's fine. You go and play matches all weekend. But what considering that you're not putting in the hours you you would like to train what what would you go and train if you were to go and train with a with, with me this weekend as two players uh, it's funny i think there's there's certain parts of my game you know how in tennis and i, I we talk about tennis because it's obviously something that we we did years and years of you know i felt in tennis if i hadn't played for a while my return would be the part of my game that would let me down it would it was the part of the game that i needed regular repetition to play uh, like to be able to play mm -hmm. it well and i feel like in paddle for me that's the lob like mm -hmm. if i haven't played for a while then i was getting it by the by the end of the first day, second day, I was getting accuracy on my lobs, but initially, particularly, you know, that, that, that kind of lobbing, you know, the high lob or, or even actually the fast lob as well is my accuracy on my lobs is, is something that um, I need to train. It's a, it's a funny one because if you think about the lob is one of the most important shots of the game and you think most players, the only time they are lobbing is to feed short bandekas to their to their partners, hmm. you know, so you are intentionally feeding a short lob, yeah. like to, to your opponent, you're not actually ever practicing your proper deep lob, and then you play matches, and then everyone wonders why their, their lobs are inaccurate. So for me, the, the, the defense slash lob part of my game would be an area that, that I'd want to work on. And I mean, my volleys are always, my, my volleys are always solid. Like, uh, you know, it's part tennis, part, it's a game I'm really comfortable with. Um, you know, I would probably say overheads a little bit as well, really, maybe my, my Vibra and, and, and Bandeka. So would you do basket feed it? Like, so would you do baskets on your, on the lob or would you, you do, you practice it more in point situations? Um, I might, I mean, well, if I'm training with you, then I, I'm, we may or may not use like the slinger ball machine. If I was on my own, I'd use a slinger ball machine and I'd set it up and put it in the corner and I'd practice after double glass or side glass hitting, hitting the lob. Um, with you, I would probably say, right, I wouldn't mind doing a small basket, so maybe half a basket of you feeding a ball in and I practice that high lob, but then I put it into a condition. So I might say, um, you know, I'm gonna hit two down to you and I'll hit two Chiquitas in a row and then the third one, I'm gonna play the lob. And, and if we then want to take that further, we'd progress and open it out. So I'd say, once I hit my lob, the point is then open cross court, for example. That, that, that is probably like the steps I would use to, to train that. Yeah, perfect. All right. Well, that's that's what we'll do yeah. this week. And I, I'm I'm just looking forward to to Hits training a little to training a little bit. Yeah, it feels like it's been a while now. Yeah. So, and also, I'm used to training in you know Tenerife conditions, <laughs> 25. I can only I can only play in beautiful sunny with the, conditions. The beach five minutes away. Oh, so there you go. It's going to be a bit of a step down, but yeah. Oh, the other thing, thinking of this week. Sorry, that 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 just got me thinking. We got our. We're going to do our breath work and ice bath uh, oh, course on the Saturday. Just yeah. as just as you were thinking of warm weather, beach, positive, I just thought I'd yeah pop that in. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. We'll, our next podcast will probably be after that. <laughs> I thought you say in an ice bath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that as well. Our next po podcast will probably be after that, so we can discuss. Well, you know how beneficial you 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 felt it was, and uh, you, you know your experience <laughs> just me. there. Yeah. Just, no, you. just me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, not yeah. actually getting in the ice bath. Yeah. I'm just yeah, going to yeah. interview you. Oh. Cold water plunges is is not one of my. Well, actually, if it's a sunny day like this, you'll be all right. Well, I actually, say it, but when we were in Malaga recently, I thought I'd have a dip there, and that was that was cold enough. <laughs> I felt like that was that was getting me ready for the cold plunge. <laughs> Wait, a little little <laughs> beach little beach swim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, we'll see. We'll we'll have to update everyone on how we definitely will. On how if that you're goes. interested on in 
our ice bath experience then you know we'll, we'll, we'll cover that in the next in the next episode but um, let us know again in the comments if if there's something specific you would like us to discuss and and actually I think what we might do is record some of our training so that, that people can see that on the on the next one see you there